Alrighty. And then um, I'm going to start with a simple pencil drawing. And I'm just going to, and you know, it's interesting in um, the fellow's work that we we're just looking at, Tim's, whatever it was, um, he, you could see the pencil very lightly behind the watercolor which I kind of liked. I don't like it when the pencil's too pronounced. It's, it sort of takes something away. So I'm just going to do a quick version of this. I like some of the little things that happen on the way. And then I'm going to draw a little darker than I normally do because so you can see the drawing. And then that this comes down this way. This is up just a little bit higher. And this starts to come over here like this and then down this way. And then this is going to come like this this and it winds its way back this way this is going to come this way it's got a little thingy on the thing right there and then this goes like this and i'm exhausted so i'm going to take a little break and I'll be right <laughs> <laughs> so and then here's the bottom of the bell we'll call this the bell and then we got this great ripple that goes all the way around it and it almost touches this edge, but not quite. And it's going to come around like this. It's going to come like this. It's going to come down like this. Mm -hmm. Just see the very bottom part of that bell is all we're going to see on this. And it kind of comes up to about there. And then inside, um, it's probably a little harder, definitely harder for you guys to see. But there's these little st stamens, I guess they're called. Pistols or stamens coming this way. And they're kind of doing this thing down at the bottom. And then we got the stem. There's a stem over here. So I'm going to get that. So I'm going to pull the stem in just a little bit, make it a little bit more part of it, make it shorter, but make sure that it's in the painting. And I'm ready. And so I'm going to got three brushes. I'm going to be um, probably just mostly working with the larger brush. This is um, one of my favorite um, sable brushes. It's Kalinsky sable, but it doesn't have a great tip on it. It holds a ton of water. It's an old friend. Um, so that's why I have a number six nearby. This is, I believe, a number number four. I'm sorry, number four. And then this is just a, if there's any, like the stamens probably, number two, uh, just to get that uh, little bit of detail in there. But I'm going to start with the, the larger brush. Here's the one. Hold on. There's another brush I actually prefer. I don't know what I did with it. Here it is. Actually, I'm going with this, with this sable brush because this sable brush has a nice tip on it when it's wet, and I can get more done with it. So... I really like this brush a lot. So um, we're going to go with that. All right, we're going to dig into some fancy yellow. Boy, that's got some green in it from the last time I painted it. Let me get that out of there. Good, better. And we're going to add just a hint of orange to it because it's not, it's a beautiful yellow, but it's got a, a little bit of orange in there. Just a little bit, actually, and that'll be the brightest, the brightest colors. And I'm just going to start putting in the yellow where I see it, and I'm going to put it everywhere. And I'm going to let the next, the next layer go right over the top of it, right over the top of it. And I don't mind if my yellow goes across my line a little bit because when I come in with the background, I'll be able to just cover it. A nice rich background here, so we can just make that um, go right over the top of it. But here comes that, that yellow coat over short of all of it. And again, I'm trying to I'm trying to just not overthink it. Let it be about about the mood of the flower. Let's important to, mostly to keep this fresh we want to keep this very fresh that's going to be an important part of this and if it gets a little bit juicy in the process that's okay we try not to lose all of our shape so here comes this orange and some of this orange might bleed into the yellow just a little bit and if it does that's okay and the orange is quite yellow right here for example that's where the light's trying to push through again on this edge i see the same sort of thing and then it gets much darker in the middle there, but let's just kind of fill that in for now, like this. All right. I, I can't jump in too soon because I need to um, let it uh, dry enough so that I can make it, make it do what I want uh, without it being too juicy. So now what I've got is a hair dryer. 
which I'm going to plug in and just and it just hit it a little bit. Not a lot, just enough to take a little bit of the shine off, but not all of it. And then I want to just hold it up to the light so I can see the shine and where we are with it. And just a little bit more on this edge. Good. That's it. Now I'm going to start working on some of the shadows. I'm going to come in with some more of the Hansi yellow, but I'm going to add just a little bit more. I'm using something, there's an orange I've fallen in love with called Scarlet pyrrole and it's it's a it's an unusual i think it's like hole bumming or something but it's like a very vivid orange it's this one right here look at this hmm. it's just a, and why they call it the scarlet I, i'm not sure it probably comes from a scar a mine where they mine scarlet and this is just one of the colors they get out of that mine i'm guessing i don't know but it's such a lovely color and so here we go so just using the tip i'm going to start finding some of these shadows in here and let them bleed a little bit. They don't have to be perfect. They can just sort of have a nice soft edge. And maybe some of this part over here, we're going to sort of suggest some of the little ripples that we see. We're going to leave it there for now for that one. Um, but what, actually, while it's drying, some of these dark oranges actually appear to have a little bit of purple in them. So I'm going to take a little bit of um, Quinn purple. I'm going to add it to the orange. And we're going to drop some of that in right now and let that do its thing. All right. While that's having a chance to dry a little bit, we're going to be going into these shadows on here. And remember, this is, this is about capturing the freshness of this flower. This isn't really about it looking exactly like the picture. And so here we go. So this is going to be, I'm going too orange on here. So I'm going to make it just a little more yellow. And here we're going to find these shapes in here. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. color was that? This is Hansi yellow, and I've added a little bit of that scarlet orange. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're so welcome. And it's kind of coming this way, and that shadow comes here. And then there's a little bit of texture over here. And then that yellow is right there. I'm going to come this way with a shadow right there. Get down at the bottom, and there's less orange really right down here. So I'm going to just use mostly yellow. And actually, I see a, a hint of green in there. So I'm going to add a touch of cerulean blue to the. And let that be a little more green. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And over here, I see a little, so where you see a little color, sometimes you want to push it in a painting like this. So um, this has got, a, again, a little more blue in it in this yellow over here. And so I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to add a little bit more of that blue. Let this tip become a little greener right here. Let me push this green a little bit harder. And then as it goes this direction, it gets more orange. It gets a lot more orange. So here we go. We're going to find the edge of that petal. And then it comes right in like this. And, and then it just melds with this next shadow over here. But then it comes down like this. And that orange blends right into the, the green there. Um, I'm going to go up here one more time, where it's definitely less uh, green. And I'm going to find that edge of this shadow in the way it comes this direction. And then there's also a little bit of a shadow right here coming in this direction. And that has quite a bit of red in it. So I'm going to add the red right in here as it comes down that way. 
Cool. And now we've got this uh, stem down here. It's really quite a blue green. So I'm going to use um, a couple of different blues along with sap green. And first I'm going to put in the lighter color. I'm actually going to make it greener than this picture um, has it. And I'm going to put that in on this side. And there's actually a little bit of yellow near the top. I'm using just yellow ochre for that. And then the, when it has a chance to dry a little bit, I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush, and I'm going to find a darker edge on the far side of that. Oh, well, it feels good to be painting in watercolor again. I haven't painted in a couple of weeks. All right. You know what? This can actually go. This is really the shadow of the bell right here. So I'm going to try to find that edge a little bit more. Use a little paper towel to find that edge more. And then I'm going to go back in and make this darker right next to the bell once it's had a chance to dry a little bit. Um, let's talk about the background. Um, the background, let me get this a little bit closer to you so you can really see what's going on here. You can, I think that when it's further away, it's just harder to see what's happening. So that's, that's what, what it's really looking like now. And now we're going to go into that background. Look at this great background. So we've got these blue, bluish purples down here. We've got another flower suggested over here. Another flowers in the distance suggested by those out of focus things. Love what the camera brought to the artist. And that is these fo focal planes that when you, you look at paintings prior to the camera, there's very few out of focus backgrounds. They just doesn't exist, you know what I mean? Because uh, it wasn't the, the idea of it yet, really. How, how out of focus backgrounds can create so much space in a painting. They didn't have that. Almost everything's in focus in older paintings. So um, what the camera brought to us, and, the, and painters were actually terrified by the, by the onset of the camera. Oh no, they're gonna start doing my job is they realized they could learn an awful lot from it. And um, they interviewed people like uh, Monet and say, you know, um, what do you think about the camera? Oh, it's nonsense. It's, it's, just a, it's just a toy, blah, blah, blah. And then upon his death, they found a bunch of photographs in his studio. And this happened with many artists. In his studio, they, they could tell exactly the paintings he did from those photographs. <laughs> so he was using them as a tool too. He just didn't, it was scary because it was so new and they thought it was gonna take over their world, but it didn't of course. And uh, at any rate, um, so here we go. So here's the, the background. I make some room on my palette now. And we're gonna go in with that nice, rich, fabulous, rich background. And we've got some, really deep fabulous colors and i'm going to start with some um, sap green mixed with some turquoise and a little bit of Payne's gray because that's kind of what i'm seeing back here and i'm going to just turn this over and when i turn that over i like to turn this upside down and i'm going to start finding some of those edges again This is going to come this way. I'm going to get in that giant, gorgeous blob of yellow over here. It's way too green. I got to get some more hands uh, into this. You know, one of my things too lately is that I think I prefer almost a cadmium yellow to a Hansa lately because it's richer. It actually is richer. So and I think maybe I'm just into really richer colors. So this is going to come right to the edge here, this yellow. I'm going to try to make that center a little bit more yellow, drop in a little more pure yellow. And then I'm going to let this, this color that I'm working with, this nice rich dark color, come right up to the edge of that. So first I'm going to find this edge here, and then I'm going to bring that up and just let that touch the edge all the way around. And that's going to be that out of focus yellow in the background. And I think I want just a little bit more red near the edge of that. Yeah. And then as we come this way, there's another great piece of yellow right here. That's going to go right here. A bit more orange in it. Oh, we'll let that go orange. I like that. And then we're going to let this green transition into yet another color. So I'm going to add some blue to it, some ultramarine blue. 
And we're gonna let that come this way. Find that edge again. Oh, I like the way it's bleeding into that just a little bit, into the flower just a little bit. We can find that edge. We're gonna come this way. Juicy, juicy. And around the corner we go. Now I'm gonna spin it again. I think this is, it's almost too much of a shape over here. So I'm gonna find, blur that edge just a little bit better. And I'm gonna get right down into some pure blues. I'm gonna let that blue continue down. I'm gonna to switch to a cobalt. Let that cobalt come to I, I don't really like that yellow there. I think it almost distracts from the shape of the flower. So I'm gonna let this all be blue to here. And but I do like the yellow down here because these three really help move the eye around the painting. So um, let me go back with some more yellow over here. A little bit green, but you, you get the idea. A little bit of orange, perhaps. I'm going to come with that nice, rich cobalt once again over here. Coming this way, and let's find the edge of this. I'm going to actually add a little bit of purple. I see some lovely purple down at the bottom here. I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt to it so it's not too far. In. And I'm going to let some of this purple come into this as well because purple and yellow, fantastic. And then we're going to wrap it all the way around to this side, back to the color that was over on that side with the Payne's gray, a little bit of sap green. And this is going to kind of start over on this side. It's going to wrap itself around. I'm exhausted. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is just a few more things and I'm going to set you guys loose and let you give this a try. So, uh, and almost all of the entire thing almost was done with the giant brush. Just a couple other little things were not. So a couple little things I'd like to do is give the painting a focal point and I'm going to do that with a uh, number four. And I'm going to get in with some darker, richer colors down in the middle here. I'll be using a little burnt sienna, some yellow, and some red and I'm just going to go in here and start finding um, this edge again letting some of these stamens down at the bottom have a voice and we got to be careful we got to get the bottom part done so that the whole thing sits down below I want to make this a little softer transition right there and then this side um, has a lot of the shadow coming this direction. But it gives, it gives you the depth that we're looking for. And then this up here, there's a couple things up here. And then this edge has a little bit of interest in, in the way it ripples. And then I really love this shadow down here. And it's got some of the same colors as the bell, it's just more yellow but it's definitely richer and it comes right off the bottom of the bell down here. It goes this way. And then this comes, starts right about out a little bit further, comes right like this. You can see my paint's still plenty wet, which is really, really nice. And then I'm gonna just punch up a little bit of the, um, the shadows now that they've had a chance to dry. Uh, just a little bit more. I'm just going to find a little bit more of this edge, for example. I want to find, oh, I really like that edge a lot. And then over here, that passes in front of that. That is the edge for that one there. And just let that 
Okay. A little bit softer right there. And the last thing is going to be just some very rich color right down at the base here. And then I'm going to darken these stamens just a little bit so they sit down in the flower because right now they, they look like they're too close. So I'm going to make them slightly darker. You can see them, but they're not, they're not popping out of the base of the flower there. And then there are just some slightly darker shadows right at the base of this bell here as well. And that's it. So that's, this is the, this is the quick, the quick demo. What do you think? Oh. <laughs> pretty nice and juicy right i like it thanks Very good. there's the model there's the the quick painting kind of thing I like yours better well thank you <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll give you the five bucks later thank you <laughs> the, what, one thing i want to do too is i want to just really it, it keeps lightning on me is just make this a little darker down here so that this really really the bell pops a little bit more that's already doing it so all right so I'm going to put this image up on the screen, and I want everybody to give this a, a try. You'll see the colors much better on the screen as well. So um, I'm going to stop uh, the recording.